This is your host, Caitlin Cook, and welcome to a special edition of the Dead Kate Bounce Experience. I am going to hash it out with producer Bobby and special guest Tom Brazil, who is a specialist in distressed assets. And it would only make sense that we're having this special edition of the pod to cover the biggest headline in crypto history, and that is about FTX and Binance. Not much else that needs to be said as a preamble to the pod. So with that, please enjoy my conversation with Bobby and Tom. All opinions expressed by your hosts and the podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of the hosts or any of their affiliates. This podcast is for commercial and informational purposes only, is not investment advice, and should not be relied upon for any investment decisions. We are not recommending any securities or cryptocurrencies, nor is this an offer or sale of a security or cryptocurrency. All right. Um, Well, no question why we're here today. If you haven't been living under a rock, you probably know the biggest thing in crypto possibly ever has been unfolding this week. And that is uh, the potential insolvency of FTX, which is the biggest one of the biggest crypto exchanges in the world. Uh, And, you know, there's Binance involved in this. There's Alameda Research as well. Um, large trading firm that was also started by Sam Bankman Fried, who founded FTX. And there's been a ton of misinformation on Twitter, as always, not surprising. Also, a really bad day for Twitter to roll out their paid verified accounts because everyone's just paying to look verified with a check mark and then changing their names to news sources and putting out uh, inaccurate information. Uh, Producer Bobby might have paid to have his account verified. Today, it must. But... It was a slip of the digits. I don't know. It was... He he did not participate in the misinformation spreading, which is the most important part. But just know that if you see a check mark on there, the value of those check marks is uh, extremely diminished versus last week. So sorry, Bobby. Hey, I Twitter worked. I worked marks. many years to get that check mark, and I'm proudly paid for it <laughs> <laughs> today. I'm but that's not. On. But that's not why we're here today. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a an emergency hash it out uh, that we had to do today. You know because uh, we needed to really make sense as best we can of all this news. I, I mean, Kaylin, you kind of said is one of the biggest. This is the biggest news to ever come out of crypto, no doubt. I mean, Tom and I remember the Mt. Gox days. Like, oh, yeah. like that was big news then. But to put it into context, you know, that was back when crypto was nascent. It was, it, I was at, I was at Canadian conferences where they were, there was companies marketing uh, Bitcoin ATMs. Okay. Like th- that was the fossil era compared <laughs> to like what's going on today. Like this is the yeah. biggest and we'll definitely suck up the headlines probably for the next little bit, you know? Um, so, I mean, let's, let's kind of hash it out. And, you know, for those that don't, you know, aren't following the space as closely as they, as, as, as you guys, as us now, you know, maybe, maybe kind of the bullet points of exactly what happened, what led to today. Kaylin, you want to kick it off and then Tom, you fill in the blanks. Yeah, no, let's do yeah. it. Uh, first though, caveat to all of this, cause we were la- like laughing and stuff earlier. This is insanely unfortunate. And it's like one step forward, three steps back for this entire space um, in a manner of hours. Um, just to say like, I mean, again, still waiting on a conclusion on all of this and we're kind of reporting on it during it all going down but there have been countless people who have likely lost a lot of their money and that's not something to to laugh at it's certainly not good for the crypto space as a whole to see one of the biggest players in one of the biggest onboarders for new people new entrants um and where a lot of people got their first exposure first crypto assets it's horrible they cannot explain that so just want to caveat this entire conversation with that and also the fact that again this is all still unfolding by the time this is out maybe things have changed but information flow right now is absolutely absurd and uh, crypto markets operate 24 7 anyway so we're used to the chaos but um again like i mentioned before so basically this entire situation is around ftx um which is one of the more like centralized exchanges, global exposure. Like they're in like, I can't even remember now, like over a hundred countries, maybe something like that could be wrong. Um, but they're everywhere. One of the biggest um, proponents for getting people into the space, they look like, look and feel like a regular retail brokerage app. So, you know, we've talked about this on the podcast before. That's one of the main ways that new people will get onboarded into crypto is the FTXs of the world, the Coinbase's of the world, that sort of thing. And one of the biggest um, 
parts of working with, say, an FTX over a decentralized exchange, and other than it being you know comfortable and not having to manage your own assets, those assets are managed by the firm, so managed by FTX. So with that, it's a little bit more hands-off than a lot of the people who are trying to do self-custody, which can be overwhelming for people who are new to crypto. And I promise I'm going somewhere with this. So part of the terms of uh, like what, like terms of sale, I guess, with working with a company like an FTX, terms of service, thank you, um, <laughs> with, a, with a firm like FTX yeah. is um, the fact that if you are a customer depositing assets on that platform and they're managing those assets for you, that those customer assets are segregated from any other assets that could be used um, as collateral or leveraged or used for other purposes, just to really ensure that those assets aren't, you know, being used in ways that can't be eventually paid out when the clients want to withdraw those funds. Uh, hopefully I explained that right. But really the last like few days ending the rant, because we can just get into and Tom can fill the blanks in, but um, FTX has a token FTT and the price of that got driven down. I don't even know what the percentage was, but almost to nothing. Um, after CZ, who is the founder of Binance, had been tweeting back and forth with uh, Sam, who's the CEO of FTX, and founder and just going back and forth on that posted a picture of Alameda's balance sheet, who is also uh, a firm that was also founded by Sam and they work, you know, obviously investors in one another and whatnot and own, you know, Alameda definitely owns some FTT as well, probably a very substantial amount. And when the price of FTT plummeted that um, I guess in a nutshell really exposed a lot of shortcomings or lack of assets um, in the balance sheet to really cover any sort of customer withdrawals and cover some other things as well. I'm going to let Tom fill the rest of it in though, because I might've butchered some of that, but that's the general gist of it. No bueno. Yeah, that's pretty much it. No, I mean, it's interesting to see. And, you know, for myself uh, and some of the, from you know, kind of outreach I had today in the last couple of days, but I guess today and yesterday, uh, I was a little like, you know, this is probably fun. I don't really know what's going on. There's always you get these news stories and whatnot. But then when the news really started to trickle out, uh, what was going on, it was like, ooh, this is this is not so good. And you know, I think there are a lot of, um, I guess, you know, of course, individuals, but also like people in the ecosystem that you wouldn't expect to be necessarily exposed to. You know, maybe you know, you, you forget that like at the end of the day, like all these firms are CFI. Um, projects institutions um centralized and finance Different yeah centralized finance thank you no jargon and um and you know it's not bitcoin you know it's like what is like actually michael saylor who uh you know is kind of like the, the nutty professor but he is great uh you know uh he said he tweeted something out like if you have a counterparty it's not bitcoin and it's kind of true he's like you know, normally, if you if you have a counterparty, it's probably not like actual crypto. You're investing in something that's then helping you facilitate to get crypto. So if there's a sort of counterparty risk. It really isn't um, something that's decentralized. So this is like you know, it's like almost an oxymoron. So it's interesting to see, and uh, it's shocking. And you know, you do feel bad for people. I think that you know, the the, the there's not a lot of information right now. I mean, I've heard various news stories about him trying to fundraise pre. Um, having this liquidity crunch. And so I think he, you know, I would give him the benefit of the doubt. He's trying to do everything he could. But yeah, it would see that F it would seem that FTT uh was a real weak spot. Um I guess you could say the same thing of Celsius. Um it's like it's not that much different. Um I guess people assumed more of Sam and um and also like the incestuous nature nature of Alameda in FTX. I guess had been brought up by people over time, but um I guess until that article in uh coinbase or I, I believe it was coinbase i hope i'm referencing the right uh organization because it's quite a story to break i think it really highlighted to people like well hang on a second like how much of this ftt do they own um you know so we're a young industry we're still learning i say we like i'm in it but but i think the crypto industry is super young right and there's still a lot of things to happen but this is i mean this feels to me like Maybe it's just because I'm kind of in the hurricane. It feels like I i don't know what Lehman was like. This feels like you couldn't get any worse. Like, what the hell else could happen? <laughs> I mean, for real, like, Caitlin, you want to you add on to that? 
Well, I was just going to say that I forgot to mention probably the craziest part of all of this is after the Twitter interactions between SBF and CZ and having all of this information come out, Sam had actually come out publicly and said, there's a competitor that is trying to put out misinformation about us. We have assets, like enough assets to, you know, meet all obligations and whatnot and make our clients whole. This isn't true, basically. Right. And after that, um, I'd say within 24 hours, um, there were tweets that came out from both CZ and Sam yesterday saying that Binance put in a non-binding um, letter of intent to uh, purchase FTX. So that was a complete 180, jaw-dropping, um, and it literally lit the internet on fire. Absolutely crazy. So that was something that happened. And then kind of buttoning up the story to where we are now, um, no longer a deal on the table with Binance and FTX. And there have been some rumors of others trying uh, in the industry, both like financial services side and in the crypto world, trying to help make FTX whole or trying to cut a deal with them just because the alternative is probably declaring bankruptcy. And in that case, Tom can speak a lot more to this is if the you know claims and everything from people who had assets on FTX would likely be tied up for months and that would be a whole drawn out thing in court. Um, months would be one months would, would be, be great <laughs> years mount gox is still yeah. going right like isn't that still unfolding from like a legal standpoint it is but it's not fair to compare things to mount gox because it was in ja- japan japanese it was in japanese it was in uh, japan and the the process is very very slow they don't really have a bankruptcy regime uh culturally there's some of the stigma against insolvency and bankruptcy so they'd be faster than that but i mean you know if it's in bahamas a bahamian insolvency process is not known for being super fast and also it has some weird quirks and a lot of things they would probably try to file in the states i actually now that we're kind of unpacking it and thinking now you're like replaying the story like i don't know what's going to happen i mean even if finance there was a story about finance buying and paying people like 20 cents on the dollar or something like that or whatever the hole is like kind of giving them liquidity a la a like voyager style deal i don't know that 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 you know that doesn't work without a court process you can't bind people to take less than they're owed um without some sort of i don't know like adjudication like some court order that's like gonna bind people via plan and i'm not sure what the votes you would need for bahamas but given the size of ftx i think it would be in the states um i think it's actually extremely likely the more we actually want to talk about i didn't mean to like bring this up and like as a scepter but it's interesting to think about. Um, well, yeah. no, no. I mean, let's maybe we can dig in, into that a little bit more because we're not just talking about you know, like not to compare it to Mount Gox where people just had Bitcoin on there and you had to mm. you know, you're trying to redeem your your Bitcoin. You know, you're talking about people that had you know all sorts of assets that they were invested in on the FTX platform that all took a major hit for the most part. Uh, I think. I'm, I'm making a, you know, just my opinion, but I'm just assuming that they all took a, probably a big hit today. And so, I mean, there is also a case against, you know, the, you know, sue for the losses as a result of this news from their trusted, uh, uh, you know, exchange. Well, one of the things is, how, do, is how does that work, Tom? You, so a few that. things. Okay. Let's, let's unpack a few of these. So let's say FTX files and they, they default on the, the purchase of, of Voyager. Clearly Voyager is going to have a cause of action against FTX. They're going to have one whopper of a bankruptcy claim and it'll be a general unsecured claim and it'll probably be Perry pursue with the customer account claims because I'm not sure that these are held as custody. Um, even though they look like your assets and you log in your account, it looks like your assets, but really all your assets are commingled with everybody else's for purposes as, of a, as a debt, that instrument. Unless they're like, you know, the updates to the UCC that take care of it, or maybe the terms of service have some special things, I think it's very likely that they're prepared to sue. So that's a drag on recoveries. In addition to the Voyager claim of cause of action, which could be quite large, you could also have, Bobby, I wasn't sure exactly what you were getting at, but you were kind of making me think of the treasury accounts I've been hearing about. So a lot of like uh, Web 3.0 projects, you know, raise money in an ICO or raise money in general, and they have they have a lot of their treasury actually on FTX. So you think of the projects that now are affected, you know, they ha- they thought they had 4 million in funding and now it's stuck on FTX. And they're like, how are we gonna make payroll? We were just using FTX as like our bank account. I guess not due to similar to Voyager and Celsius, but I think for whatever reason, uh, there are a lot more um, treasuries 
I mean, Caitlin, I don't know if, if this is like something that comes up and you get, you're you familiar with the, where treasuries are generally are, but there could be a lot of, not contagion, but just like projects that get hit. And then I assume they would have a rightful potential claim against maybe against the estate for, you know, destroying their project. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I don't know. That That's a little harder to unpack. But Caitlin, have you heard about any of these treasuries having issues? And then, of course, the trading firms all have a ton of exposure. More on the trading firm side, I hadn't heard much focused mm -hmm. on um, much from a treasury perspective, but I also hadn't done a super deep dive in segmenting up kind of who had the exposure and where. Um, I figured the people of Twitter would do that for me eventually here. But <laughs> and to, to you know. state the magnitude of this for people, by the way, the number thrown out there right now um, and this has been literally been changing all day is around 8 billion. Um, but you know, that being said, I think that number could be much, much higher. And we've just been seeing it slowly go up during the day. So I understand. And this is where like the legality stuff, like, you know, like there was stuff that came out about potential criminal charges. I had originally heard from some sources, it was wash trading related. I had heard that it was uh, FTX token related. I really heard more wash trading related and that was from a better source. But then when I start hearing about uh, uh, commingling of assets, because you were saying at the beginning of the show, it makes me sort of think like, hmm, maybe it was more about the commingling of assets that weren't supposed to be under the terms of service. Um, That's the part I get confused about too, Tom. So, and I know, I feel like this is more of everyone trying to untangle the web on this because there's a component of it where it's the FTT aspect, right? And how much maybe Alameda had in their balance sheet for that. And there were like people doing on-chain, you know, doing some on-chain analysis and seeing massive amounts of FTT, maybe a couple months back being transferred to Alameda from FTX or an FTX wallet, things like that. But then I wonder, my thought- Maybe that's was, the wash that I heard because that yeah. source is very good. Very, very good. They said there was wash trading related. Okay. That could make sense. I okay, My other done. part of it that I wonder though is like, I, I'm personally from like a retail user standpoint and more worried on like the, I, I don't know, like more worried, but like the, the commingling of funds and like using customer assets for things that they shouldn't have been used for and not having those segregated. That's such a... Like that's literally one of the most baseline things that you are not supposed to do. So how desperate could you be to be hiding something or trying to clean something up to get to the point where that is your, like, that's how you try to fix it. I mean, so like this has come up in Voyager and Celsius, like these are really electronic brokers. We can call them what we want. Maybe they're not, maybe they're banks. It's a bear instrument. Who knows what they are. They look a lot like brokers, you know, E-Trade and things like that. And they're all kind of rules that these brokers have to follow. And there's really no reason that a lot of the crypto firms shouldn't be following these rules. Um, you know, you can port a lot of the ideas. And the coming of last is like a, a big no-no in the world of like uh, brokerage community. So they have like SIPA rules and um, things like that. So it's, it's, there's no, and I think there is a law, there's a, um, a bill that's sort of out there Loaded, I think maybe from the F, F, uh, CFTC. Um, I think that was yeah. CFTC put out some something where they want to enact a bunch of rules around like the regulation brokers and all that stuff is good. That's why I'm kind of for sensible regulation of crypto. The sad part is like when too much of this stuff happens, especially FTX, you kind of get like overreach. It's like you know, like Bobby from the you know, from the microcap space. It's like oh, one pump and dump scheme. They're all bad. Like these are all no one should be doing this. And you, I worry about getting the same thing in crypto. Um, I mean, where I mean, really, like, uh, I mean, I don't think we're there yet to ask where do we go from here, um, because I think there is maybe still to un stuff to unpack here. Because I mean, like, it, I, like I was asking this to Caitlin earlier today about you know we we literally have covered regulation on every single episode. And I'm pretty sure we're going to continue to cover regulation on every single episode for, for the Decade Bounce experience, as we should. You know, we want to hear everybody's opinion. It makes a lot of sense. But, you know, when we're talking about these centralized exchanges that um, basically just, I mean, it just seemingly where was the regulation here? You know, I, yeah. it sounds like they were trying, you know, and especially when we had our conversation with Brett um, on here for the first episode. Um, but 
you know, when people, when there's stuff out there that you see where it's like, Hey, we, this is why we need to have a pure decentralized finance system. This is the case, right? But then from a regulation side, look, she's, she's getting ready. She, for those that are watching, listen on the audio. Now it's Caitlin like stretching her fingers right now, ready to answer. Um, but like when we're thinking about the decentralized side of things, it's like, how do you, how do you like, if, if regulation is necessary to get institutional involvement, how do you regulate that when this part of the business on the centralized side, which should have been one quote unquote, easy to regulate? I don't want to say easy, but you know what I mean? Like, how, how, how do I how do I how do I put that 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 calculation together in my head? It's who wants to go first? I mean, I I don't, I don't want to answer it on the like how do we do it, but I mean get on the soapbox for like two seconds, clearly bias with like working with a core contributor to like a decentralized financial infrastructure. But right. uh, caveating all of this with that, just having the context. But what I've learned from that and looking at back at every single, almost every single blow up that we have seen that has been at scale in crypto, even in the last year, other than Terra Luna, which was very much, you know, that was on chain, whatever. Um, Every other one that you have seen metastasize and cause widespread loss of assets and whatnot, centralized entities. And what people don't understand, especially on Twitter, especially on days like today, is separating out centralized entities and decentralized ones and the difference between the two. And the biggest difference between the two is transparency. Had this happened completely on chain, I would be completely shocked if there was not someone months ago who was not tracking every single wallet, seeing these things move every single place that they went. And they couldn't do that with the cust- like customer deposits and whatnot, right? You can't track that because they're a centralized entity. They don't have that information in real time on chain that's trackable for anyone. So just that part is probably one of my biggest pet peeves. And I think that today, obviously incredibly unfortunate, but also highlights the need or the benefits of bringing things on chain. And like, yes, there is a component to how do you regulate that? And that's a big question, but it has happened time and time again. How many times do we, you know, put our faith in a system that is dependent on people doing what they say they're going to do instead of making it something that can be visible to all and accountable through code? Like I, I'm not to say that it's perfect and there's a lot that needs to be worked out, but there's a common thread with every single blow up that has happened. And it's the fact that these are coming from like centralized entities that have lower transparency. So I'll get off of my soapbox for it. I don't I know. thought you were doing like the, uh, the uh, crypto like uh, Pledge of Allegiance there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? It was like, I pledge. <laughs> Like something, something, and uh, decentralized for all. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> sounds like the crypto pledge allegiance. You're not wrong. I mean, you know, it'd be great to see all those things. I don't know regulating DeFi. I don't know that uh, you know the thing. I think that's the 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 thing. I think the the, the on ramps and the CFI institutions, which they'll be necessary in some capacity. Like, um, well, maybe not. I don't know. What do I know? But uh, there clearly needs to be some rules of the road. Um, but things happen. You know, like you know, it's like. It's not like regulation is going to be able to stop human foible. Um, not, not the phrase, whatever, human human nature of, you know, overextending yourself or things going wrong. Or um, I like to think that uh, Sam is like, I just take him the benefit of the doubt. I don't think he's like, uh, you know, has some like mischievous intent or something. But, you know, people get over their skis and take risks and get overconfident, have hubris and, and also just make mistakes. So, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, we'll see where regulation goes. I kind of like the CFTCs, uh, some of the stuff they were putting in. And I love the UCC stuff, um, the Uniform Commercial Code updates that they were going to do. And they have been doing. I think they just been, haven't been enacted in a lot of states. Um, but then the issue is like you drive stuff offshore and then how you do with the offshore stuff. Um, but then, you know, I don't know. It's 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 unfortunate. Um, I definitely think there's going to have to be some regulation. And then Stable coins, like it's so funny. Like I've spoken to two or three startups recently that are doing like stable coin projects, and they can't raise any funding because like everybody's like, "Oh no, Terra Luna, no, forget it." Like it's, these aren't Terra Luna projects; these are different stable coin projects. One guy's want to do like a like an inflation uh, an inflation connected uh, stable coin, and the other one is like a I guess like a intra bank uh, stable coin, 
And everyone's like, oh, no, 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 too much regulatory risk. So they can't even raise money. And it's like, because people are worried about regulation coming down the pike for stable coins. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I mean, does like what does this crypto winter look like compared to other ones? You know, when big news like this, because I, I mean, I remember with with Mount Gox, like that was pretty much like a two to three year, like no one even really talked about it. It was very under the radar. You know, once that news came out, people were pissed, and like maybe it was twenty. I think I remember maybe it was like in twenty fourteen that you started to see some like you know wallet companies popping up here and there and some other stuff. You know, it, it seemed like it was, you know, every couple of years. And I, I mean, I don't know if that might be the same situation here where just the market kind of needs a reset and just, you know, take a breath. <laughs> and so I don't know. Respects. I feel like I my, the, 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 my trad five friends were freaking out more than my like crypto friends or traditional finance get people. They were calling me like, what's going on? Oh, my God. And the crypto people were like, whoa, baby. What a day! And um, that that was like the difference. And I don't know, Caitlin, did you have a uh, any traditional finance versus crypto responses from today? I did. I mean, I got more messages from people in traditional finance. That's for sure. Um, definitely, mostly just people asking how I'm doing, which is nice, I guess. Um, but you know that this was a big event because my mom was sent- sending me links to articles Are you on okay? this. <laughs> yeah, my mom was like, uh, "What is this?" And I was like, "I." didn't want to mention it to you until like a little bit later on she called me and I was trying to explain it to her and you could just tell love her um and I didn't explain it well but it was she was you like, should just lean into it be like mom she was I'm like do you still moving, have a job and back. I was like, yes I do still have a job it's gonna be okay it's like it's it's all good the industry's fine but I just I can make a potluck it's gonna I, be fine I cancel my <laughs> lease uh we're gonna <laughs> So well, the TV I, in the back. <laughs> right? I was like, oh, I'm actually moving out of my apartment. No, I, I, even in like a, you know, I'm chaotic generally as a person, but I like to think in times of like stuff like, you know, very unfortunate things. I'm not going to be someone to like pour on fuel onto the fire either. Um, and I had a, more so had people asking me actually, which I thought was really interesting about Solana and the future of Solana. Um which I have very strong thoughts on as well. And again, bias because the company that I am contributing with to a decentralized network that builds on Solana, but oh, have a lot of exposure Solana. to that side. So can you get a Solana trade? There's a Solana trade out there. Um, call your neighborhood advice. friendly distress broker, not financial advice uh, at all. <laughs> so there was this float- it was floating around on Twitter. Uh, there's this trade where people want to buy FTX accounts. And the idea is use that as your long, just because you, apparently you can still move your account from one item to the next. So you could basically put it in Solana. And then the idea would be like, go on Binance and short, uh, Solana. So you're basically neutral Solana to like the pullback between what you pay. Let's say you pay 20 cents on the dollar to a dollar. So you make five X and it, you're, you're like, whatever Delta neutral, whatever the phrase is. And, uh, and uh you, you know if the deal goes through of course that pulls the par if it doesn't go through uh you know um i'm not sure how that works your ftx trade maybe is 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 like you don't to make any money because maybe you get 20 cents on the dollar but your i guess the idea is that solana would have a tough time in that uh environment i can't remember why there's there's a reason you got to go on twitter and find out because i can't remember the second part of the leg uh, so now I feel bad for mentioning it, but um, half I think, alpha. <laughs> I'm not. Tease. Yeah, it's not really. That means no alpha. Uh, but uh, that means beta. But I think that I gotta think about this. I'll unpack it. I'll look, might look on look and see the tweets I saw. I think it was Kevin from Galileo's. Do you know that guy? Mm-hmm. Um, he's pretty big on on uh, Twitter, and a lot of people follow him. But I think the idea is to like, you know, kind of set up trades where you're like your long leg is whatever you can um, buy in an FTX account. There are people actually peer to peer trading uh, FTX accounts. Um, I saw that. Which is crazy. What's yeah. the price for that right now on the dollar? Ooh. Yeah, that's us. That's a that's a head scratcher. So it started last night and I've heard some trade confirmations, maybe at 90 or 80 cents on the dollar. And then I was like. I mean, that's crazy. And then I heard 70. This is all 
last night. Um, and those were s- purportedly large blocks, but I don't think they actually, con- I don't think they actually traded. Um, and then there were some OTC desks trying to give people liquidity this morning and giving out bids like 90 and then, you know, 80, 90. And none of those traded, all those were pulled. And maybe some people got out at those prices, but then it very quickly went down to like 30, 20. And even right now, my understanding from talking to a number of people who want to buy claims, want to sell claims, is it somewhere between like a 10 and maybe 15, maybe a little more cents on the dollar. And it's not because that's a recovery, everybody. It's because nobody knows what's going on. Like no one, you know, like, we have really no information about how big the hole is in the balance sheet. Yeah. Confidence low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 11. I saw like 11 cents on the dollar, I think on Twitter. So it has to be true. Um, but I'm sure <laughs> it's gotta be true. Does that be- guy have a trick mark? It was Bobby, <laughs> wasn't it? it was he probably bought it. <laughs> post, post verify. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, good. I wonder how you would do that. I mean, no, that wouldn't make any sense. Like post verified. Um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait Kay- Caleb was, um, wanted to hear your 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 stance as well on on Solana. You said that you were getting a lot of messages on that. So what you you, you mm. say you had something to say there? Oh yeah, I always have something to say there. Um, but I think for like context to one where people come from on historically coming after Solana is that versus other blockchains that have been building out a bunch of different products and different projects and whatnot in the ecosystem, they're historically very venture capital backed, which historically on the crypto side of things, you know, it's been more bootstrapped. It's a, you know, I mean, the whole ethos at the beginning of the space, right, was more of like getting away from that. Um, And some people saw Solana being VC backed as kind of a negative and not really, you know, like, I mean, there are plenty of narratives on why people didn't think that was a good thing. I personally thought um, even before working in the Solana ecosystem that it was a positive because that meant you're getting broader adoption and you're getting traditional institutional players more involved and interested. And that's a vote of confidence in the Solana ecosystem versus others. But um, one of the big things with Solana as well is that it was in the very early days, very heavily backed by FTX Alameda um, for investments in different projects. So very, very involved there. People meme about calling it Samcoin, which I definitely don't think is accurate, but it's just kind of been a running joke for some people who um, maybe aren't big Solana fans, um, just because he and the team have been like pretty big advocates of a lot of projects that are being built. Um, so that's sort of the background on it. But I think important, again, talking about the decentralization part of it is it's not entirely propped up by FTX or Alameda, right? I mean, definitely at a larger scale than a lot of other ecosystems have ever seen, I'm sure, in terms of VC backing and whatnot. But again, like I literally was at Solana Breakpoint two days ago, which is like the big annual Solana ecosystem conference uh, globally. And the only thing I really took away from that is that it is that ecosystem is more vibrant than ever. And the number of builders doing really, really interesting things, not necessarily financed by Sam are at an all time high, even in the midst of like a pretty big bear market. So I think that speaks a lot, like speaks a lot to the group of people that are there and they don't seem to be going anywhere. Um, So there's definitely going to be not trying to like predict on price or anything like that, but FTX and Alameda had really big Solana bags um, so, I mean, just, it makes sense just thinking about, you know, you don't know how this is going to play out, but at some point those are probably going to have to go somewhere. Right. So will that have an influence on price? Almost definitely don't know what that'll look like, but that also doesn't mean it's going to zero. Right. And I think that, no, 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 that's, that's that. why people are doing this head, this like thing. Cause the idea yeah. was like, if they get bought out, it's fine. You pull the par. If they yeah. don't like that's definitely going down. Cause it's a huge bag. that's going to have to be liquidated. Mm-hmm. I mean, the problem that people don't understand sometimes this is like it happened with Celsius. Like the Celsius token was like hugely owned by the estate itself. Like, you know, it's still owned a hugely like 95% apparently of cell tokens are owned by Celsius. And so there's like no liquidity at all. And so for a while it ran from like 50 cents to like a dollar, 15, $2 and $3 over the weekend or something. And people were like, oh, look, now the debtor is solvent because it's worth $3. It's like, no, it's not. Like, this is like a fic- this is a fiction. This is like funny money. Like, 95% of the float is owned by the debtor's estate. So it could very well happen to Solana. You could see it crash if FTX files. And then you could see it. And then literally, if 
fifty percent of the float or something. I don't know what the amount is, but some huge amount of the float is offline. Then you can see it just like just totally, you know, fly through the roof with all the supply going offline. So it's kind of weird because when you have these bankruptcies, it's kind of an odd thing. It kind of like actually pulls supply offline um, while the bankruptcy is going on. That doesn't mean it's fundamentally changed the value. It just means that um, you get like a short squeeze, you know? Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's another part of it. Like, I, that's what I we should just trade about. all day. We shouldn't think about projects. Like who wants to actually build stuff? We should just like, you know, oh yeah, I have like 10 screens over here. You can't see them. They're off. <laughs> Like, You're like, I'm trading right now. <laughs> I'm glad you went to an event where there are people aren't just talking about like trading. Like I went to an event in London that shall remain nameless uh, because I will bash it now. And it was just all people trading, trading, trading. We do PB, prime broker, prime broker, like, you know, trade, 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 trade. And I was like, oh, this is like, you know, suits and trading and prime brokerage. Okay, great. Like, okay. Do we need more of this in crypto? I guess. But it's nice to go to a event where there's people building stuff yeah i mean it's it's definitely something that makes you feel a lot better about what you're doing when you see so many people excited about what they're doing and mm-hmm. building cool shit no matter what the price of are you getting verklempt when you talk about it huh? <laughs> i was joking i think you're getting a little verklempt when you talk about oh no i was something. burping <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought. I thought I'm gonna you were do that into my it. mic. <laughs> oh man, um, I'm getting a little yeah. worked up talking about this. Uh, I'm gonna cry. The, I love building so much. projects. Oh. I'm so proud <laughs> about build. Web three. <laughs> um, so Tom, I'm curious too. So for the people who haven't listened to a podcast uh, that I had Tom on previously, which was a cool one. So. He is a very interesting character just as a human, but also background wise. So focusing an investor in bankruptcy law um, or like investment in bankruptcy law or whatever you want to call it. Bankruptcies in distress, distress, debt, that sort of thing. And that's why I'm super curious to hear your thoughts on how this is all unfolding and like the opportunities there. Like, I don't even want to say opportunities, right? Because it feels kind of like vulture type of thought with like. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's interesting from your perspective. I mean, you, you always need capital, like whether you're going through restructuring or not. Um, you know, I think, you know, like a lot of things in life, especially when in distress, the way you do it is just as important as what you do. And and so the way you do it is important. And for myself and I think a number of firms I actually try to be as constructive as possible. Of course, you have bottom fisher type people that, you know, you would say, oh, my God, this guy's just a total bottom fisher trying to take advantage of the situation. And that's fine. Um, uh, but there are also a number of people that try to be constructive. And even if you think of, you know, I heard stories about, you know, firms trying to step in and put lines of credit in for trading firms that probably have capital stuck on FTX. And that's a good thing that that'll help the ecosystem. Um, um, it helps with firms clearly, but it also like probably better for the broader ecosystem. And like, you know, CZ, the, the way he, I, like, I don't think it's lip service, you know, like some of these guys, like, I think it's important. They, they do think the ecosystem is important. And I, I applaud like the way that even he's handled the situation. And I would, I would, I, I can't say I've been totally turned off by the way Sam's handled things. Um, it's unfortunate, and it was always kind of incestuous the whole Alameda connection. Um, and I assume that's probably the major issue between the FTX token and the exposure with Alameda. Um, but I'm, we don't know. We don't know anything. So I mean, there's of course there's lots of opportunities. I think the issue, most interesting thing, if you're just someone like at home, like myself or anybody else, like, you know, if you believe in the ecosystem long term, there's a lot of, you know, interesting entry, entry points, like to, you know, not investment advice, but there's like lots of, you know, interesting, simple things you can do. I mean, Bitcoin's way down, you know, Ethereum's way down, Solana's way down. Like, if you believe in these ecosystems and you were watching them for a while and you're like, hey, maybe I'll, this is like an opportunity. I don't need to do something complicated. Um, and you know, it's they're not, they're not get rich quick, yeah, quick schemes, but you know you can potentially you know get in at an interesting time. And I think the projects who is it says this? I mean, I think a few ventures say this. Like the best stuff is built in the bear markets, and I think it's true. It's like people stop like talking about like how much they made off their token, and they start focusing on like what they're actually building that matters to the world. So. Yeah. Uh oh. I'm frozen. 
No, no, you're good. We can still see. Hear you. <laughs> well, you know, another question for both of you. You know, um, okay. For for all those for all those folks that were never you know crypto believers and whatnot. I mean, can you explain? Let's say you were talking to them directly. I don't. I don't want to name names, but let's say you're talking to them directly. Can you explain to them why it's irresponsible to say, you know, here you go, it's gonna fail. Like this is it. This is all the proof you need that crypto is done. You know what? What would be some of your response to that? I think there are a lot of people who use opportunity, like use events like this as an opportunity to affirm their prior, reaffirm their priors rather than, you know, actually trying to be objective and like look at the facts of a situation. This is clearly a huge black mark on the crypto industry. There's zero denying that. It's incredibly for- in- unfortunate. It sets us back. Institutional adoption will likely be pushed back quite a bit as well. And it doesn't, it's unsettling. It should be unsettling to say the least. It erodes any trust that people had in the space. Sam was probably one of, if not the most influential person in crypto and the most visible. And, you know, love him or hate him, that has an impact. And to see someone at the top go down the way that he did just now and this week, it's, I mean, it's hard to think positively around that. And people who are building in different ecosystems across the crypto space, I mean, you know, they, it's, it's a very dark time for everyone. And I think, you know, you're in an early state, yep. early stages of a space, um, new technology and a lot of experimentation. So many things are going to break. And that's not an excuse. It's just a fact of the matter. And, you know, the only the most important thing is like taking what has happened and actually doing something to make things better rather than having it repeatedly happen time and time again and just not trying to improve things like if these these events aren't used to actually make things better then what are we doing you know and the space will suffer for that and it's, it's going to suffer anyways but if we don't take time to like reflect on how we even got to this point and how to not do it again then i mean i can't blame people for not being interested in the space at all because we're making a joke of ourselves if we don't take this seriously so i don't know what tom thinks here He's bad. I don't know, man. I kind of was into Sam. I thought he was cool. I was, I was into effective altruism. I'm buying it. I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. You know, like, I don't know. I thought he was like a good, uh, whatever you want to call it, like when someone's like, like a torch, torch bearer, I guess, for the industry. So it's unfortunate to yeah. see. And yeah, you don't want to see someone's downfall. I mean, it's like it's not really what. Hopefully, it's not what it's about. Um, I don't even think traditional finance is about that, but these things happen. Um, it's crazy. It's kind of weird. You know, it's kind of like, hmm, wow. So it does shake confidence. And I think people that are, it's kind of weird because, you know, when Mt. Gox was happening, uh, I wasn't really in the ecosystem, but I guess like 15, 16 is kind of where I started jumping in. And when I first started talking about Bitcoin and Mt. Gox, like people like laughed at you. They were like, what, what are you talking about? Like, you get some sleep something brother and uh i think now it's kind of interesting i had like a few tradfi people who were traditional finance people who are sort of like oh this is a great buying opportunity and i'm like yeah it is right i mean i remember in the 18 pullback or bear market like i even had someone who was like a real crypto person was like i don't know tom it, it could all go to zero right now like like 51 percent attack like this could all go to zero and it's kind of like you're scaring me because <laughs> like, you know, you're like supposed to be my rock. I was coming to you to get my, my sermon instead. You're, but I haven't had any of that y- yet, at least. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are people that feel that way. It's unfortunate for people stuck in it. I mean, I think it's, this is probably true of a lot of technologies that change the world. It's like, you were right, but you were wrong. You know, like you knew telecommunications was going to change the world. And yet you bought a penny stock that, Stayed a penny stock and never made you money, or vice versa. You know, you bought some stock that went to zero. Um, so, you know, and that's unfortunate because it's like, you know, and I also like this. I don't know. FTX probably has, I think, fewer like, like sort of, I don't want to call them home gamers, but kind of like more. I think the, the thing that was to me the saddest about, I, I noticed it more with Celsius and Voyager. There's a lot of like individuals who are literally just individuals. 
saving for retirement, saving for a home. They were borrowing, um, you know, against their collateral for school tuition. I mean, like stories, you're just like, oh my God, this is sad. You know, versus you never really get any of that in Mount Cox. I mean, you know, computer, you know, minded, whatever, people that are very interested in technology types and then like libertarians and such, but didn't quite get that same, like this person like had no idea what was going on. And, and unfortunately they got sucked into this. I don't know if we'll see that in FTX. I don't know. I don't think we will because it was supposed to be offshore. And so anybody that's American that has an account there should not, <laughs> should not. Uh, but you know, we'll see. We'll see who, who has good VPN. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think, I think we pretty much covered everything. I don't know, guys, did we, did we miss anything from the last couple of days? Uh, any, any expectations about how maybe the, at least the next little bit will play out or do we want to just kind of close up shop right now and uh, have a drink and, you know, not, this isn't hash it out. This is, this is and not even happy hour. This is just hour and drink, I guess, you know, yeah. but uh, I don't know what, what maybe just give us your closing thoughts before we uh before we uh close up here. I'm not going to bother on speculating on what is going to happen just because no one has any fucking clue. Like there's just no way. And anyone who pretends to and says it with certainty is like just a proponent of spreading misinformation to like cause more chaos, which this space does not need right now. Um I know. <laughs> yeah, like to say the least. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I'm just curious more to see if First of all, I want to see how big of a hole this actually is, because um, I really don't, we don't have clarity on that for sure. Again, like $8 billion was thrown out there. I would argue that it's definitely much higher than that if I had to just completely guess blind, um, but it hasn't come to surface yet. I mostly am sort of worried that, you know, if CZ couldn't, after looking at the financials, wanted nothing to do with this, how bad can it be? That's my concern. Um, and other than him, like, if not him, then who, right? And what's the alternative? So again, not going to guess on it, but TBD, lots to lots to come. I think. Yeah, wow. I mean, I don't. I I mean, I just saw Richard Handler, who's like the CEO of Jeffries, like tweeting literally just now about like FTX. He says, "My personal email trail on non-meeting with FTX." Oh, okay, whatever. But you know. So I guess he, oh, he got, he wanted to meet with FTX, but he didn't meet with them. Oh, okay. So they reached out to Jeffries. So now we know that. Um, I think they're filing. I think they're going to file. But, but, but you, you, you never know. I mean, maybe, maybe a consortium can be put, a consortium can be put together. Such a great word. Um, and, and uh, you know, we'll see. But it'd be nice to get a, a I don't say a fast resolution, but a, a decent uh and get to the bottom if there was anything that was shenanigans that should be sorted out but um yeah that's a, the only thing i would put out there we have no idea of recoveries just filing doesn't mean zero filing means whatever the recovery is that's there that's the other thing so some people like sort of conflate the two things all right that's i think it. i think <laughs> all right well you know look i uh, think uh, i think we're there Thank you guys for giving your your feedback. And, you know, it, it's as Caitlin said at the top, you know, there's a lot of people that have been hurt by this and we just hope that, you know, they're they're made whole or at least as close as possible. Right. Because, uh, you know, you know, we made some, some, you know, we made a couple jokes here and there having to do with the situation. But at the end of the day, it's it's retail that's been mostly affected here. And we just we just want to make sure that they're, you know, they're looked after and protected. And when it comes to any crypto project or anything having to do with financial markets, you know, uh, crypto, micro cap, anything otherwise, you know, we want to make sure that they're they're protected and everything's as transparent as possible. So let's hope there's a quick resolution to this. I would assume there probably won't be, but we'll just keep looking out for more information, right? Yeah. 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 Thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> Thanks, man. And Thanks. we gotta lighten it up. We yeah, all, we'll talk but, about something else next. Yeah, right. Uh, Caitlin, we should bring back uh, Caitlin's cocktails, maybe. Uh, yeah, what are we drinking tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think that, I think we should bring back that one. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. All right. I'll take it easy. All opinions expressed by your hosts and the podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of the hosts or any of their affiliates. 
This podcast is for commercial and informational purposes only, is not investment advice, and should not be relied upon for any investment decisions. We are not recommending any securities or cryptocurrencies, nor is this an offer or sale of a security or cryptocurrency.